Hello, all my friends and clients. I love you so much. I am here with my daughter, Madison. Hello, everyone. 20 years ago, Julia was pregnant with Madison when I started the Wood Sounds Company. And I am so excited that today, Madison is working with us in the shop. <laughs> and as you know, we're designing the new flute of the month. It is called Celebrations. This flute is in celebration of 20 years of wood sounds. And me being 20 years old. And this flute of the month is actually designed as a set in recognition of Madison and I working together. Yes. We are using western red cedar burl and a yellow cedar burl, which we did in a yin-yang effect almost. The yin-yang idea of this was something that I brought to it. And frankly, for me, it was the most important. Yeah. Everything else, I wanted Madison to design this flute. Yeah, and so when we were designing like the inlay idea, my dad originally had the idea to do Nigerian ebony with silver dots in it. And we've done it before, and you can see it with our other flute of the monster, beautiful. But I was not very excited about it. I felt like we needed to use that white buffalo marble where it can show the difference between feminine and masculine. You know, I really didn't think that the white buffalo turquoise was going to look good. <laughs> yeah. And then when we actually started working it into the flute, oh my gosh, it was incredible. Well, I could see it the whole time, and I knew you had those hesitations with it, and I was like, no, as soon as he sees it, he's going to fall in love with it. Look at the grain on that wood as it's turning. I know. Wow. You know, for me, one of the great joys that I've had in the last 20 years making flutes has been helping clients create what they have imagined in their own head. Mm -hmm. And this, for me, was one of those points, helping you take these ideas in your head and turning them into reality. <clears throat> Sweetie, that's my purpose, baby. Yellow cedar burl has always been one of my favorite woods. Me too. It smells so good. Right? Just the aroma is so poignant. And then that western red comes oh in. Oh my gosh. You want to go see some friends? Or see a cat? Or go to the dog park? Most of you are familiar with Dax, but let me introduce you to Zorro. Zorro is my puppy. He is now our little shop guy. He is a beautiful border collie, and he is the sweetest dog in the world. He loves us to go on adventures, so a lot of you guys will now be meeting Zorro as well. You know, there's a lot that goes into flute making. Some of it's tool making. Absolutely. Some of it's sharpening. We have to change out all these blades that you're seeing us use right now. We have to sharpen them up. All of these tools need constant love and care. And we did run into some issues while working with this beautiful western red cedar as my dad pulled out right here. We had some grain issues where the grain wasn't really working with us and it ended up breaking and cracking on us. and. We ended up having to scrap the whole piece, which is really unfortunate, but just that's just what happens sometimes with burls. They're very unpredictable. And as you can see right here, I'm not very happy right now because unfortunately that piece of wood that I was boring, it ended up breaking on me and I was really disappointed because it was just beautiful. But my dad, as you can see, was showing me some tricks and telling me what exactly went wrong and so that we can fix it and whatnot. And one of the things that we're talking about here specifically is top dead center in the lathe. Sure. When we're boring flutes, sometimes you've got to pull the blank out of the lathe. And so what Madison and I are talking about here specifically is how to make sure that you have the best chance of getting that flute blank properly centered in the lathe. Look at that yellow cedar burl. Oh, that end cap, I was so excited for. As soon as we started turning it on the CNC, I saw that burl in it. I got so excited. I know, right? I wish the audio was still on there because you can hear me telling Pablo, look how cool that is. Look how beautiful <laughs> that is. Oh my gosh. I was all excited. You know, a lot of people think about flute making, they think about woodworking. But for me, flute making really comes down to tuning and voicing. Yes. The woodworking is just getting things prepared for the point where the real flute making can happen. 
as we were doing this, Madison, one of the things I was hoping to do was to be able to teach you how to build a joined flute where you have, for example, in this video, you have the yellow cedar burl being the head joint and then the western red cedar burl tube. And the crazy thing to me is in the old days, I used to do a joined flute with just a butt joint, literally gluing oh the two gosh. pieces of woods together. And I have seen flutes recently that we made that way that are still solid, still good, still whole. And yet now we do them in a totally different way where we sleeve them internally and try and create as much strength as we can in that instrument so that our clients are gonna have these instruments. For the rest of their lives and their kids will too. Exactly, That's that it. is exactly the hope. Everything we do in the shop, we do with intention. We look at every grain, we look at every piece of wood. It doesn't matter if it's a classic or if it's a custom. We agonize over how we're gonna position the wood so that it looks the best we possibly can for you. Every step away. Every step of the way. Because there's sometimes you make a choice where the acoustics are more important. Mm -hmm. The mark I'm making here is done with intention so that we can align the flute while it's in the lathe and I can't see the grain directly. But we've already made the decision on how these two pieces of wood are gonna to come together. All of that's done with great intention. Yes. Look at those shots. Wow. I love that white buffalo so much. I know, me too. You've really redefined for me what I think about in terms of beauty on flutes. Right? Oh, totally. We had some challenges with this particular flute. And this is normal when you do a joined flute. The Forstner bits we use and the boring rods we use are not exactly the same size. No. And so what happens is they get really tight. And so we need to sand the inside of the flute to be able to get our mandrel, which is the thing that allows us to keep the flute concentric. And so that's what Madison and I are working on, is getting this mandrel to be able to fit inside the flute. So it's gonna take some sanding at the join where we put the sleeve. I just remember just crossing my fingers and just like saying a quick prayer, just please don't break. <laughs> I knew our flutes, they don't break very easily. So in my mind, I knew that it would be fine and that he could tap it like what he's doing right now and it would be totally fine and wouldn't break on us. But oh my gosh, I was so scared. <laughs> I was so scared. Yeah. Oh, look at those circles right up in there. Oh, they're fabulous. Oh my gosh, the grain is so amazing. Beautiful. Watching this turn down on the CNC, I just I couldn't take my eyes off it. It was so beautiful. One of the things that I love about flute making is we get to see the ugly before it's beautiful. Yeah. Right? And we get to take that ugly love on it and turn it into something truly special. Wow. And uh, it happens on every single flute. Yep. This is the most satisfying thing to watch. Yeah. I love right? this step so much because I, I, I just sit there and I just get enthralled with it because it's just so, I just love watching it. It's so satisfying. There's still some work we need to do on the programming on the CNC. Yeah, Some things I'd like to change, but overall, I'm very pleased with how it works.
Whenever somebody starts in the shop, I always tell them, you know, these tools can hurt you. They will bite you. They can take your fingers. They can take your arm. Some of the tools, right? Seriously. Mm -hmm. Oh, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> She's not going to get that mandrel out that no. way. But of all of the tools, the most dangerous one is the belt sander. That baby will bite you faster than anybody else. Oh, yeah. In fact, we call it honey badger. Is that honey badger? Honey badger don't care. Honey badger don't care. It's going to get you. We have a sticker on our belt sander that literally says, beware of the honey badger. <laughs> There's so many things that we do in the preparation of the flute blank to get it to the point of flute making. It's super robust. Oh yeah. It's funny because I don't think about how robust things are because it's just what I do, right? Yeah. And for 20 years, this is what I've done. Mm -hmm. And yet, you know, I get somebody like Pablo in here and he sees me work and he's like, dude, you are super physical in your effort. Yeah, it's a full workout. Yeah, it is, definitely. Yeah, well, I'm excited about the things that we've done to be able to help you be able to do the same work that I do that's not quite so physical. Yes, we've found a lot of different things that we can do to make it less laboring on me Yeah. and on you. Yeah, exactly. Because you're getting older and you're not going to be able to do the exact same things that you're going to be able to do now. Exactly right. love turning down mouthpieces. You love just watching it come together and then you get to see what's hiding underneath the top layer of the burl. The way that the bit is approaching and everything about how the CNC is working, when I figured out the proper directions to be turning the wood and everything, Madison, it was a huge, huge change. It took five minutes on the CNC to turn a mouthpiece. Mm -hmm. And the way that we're doing it now, Maybe it's less than a minute. Yeah. And it's better. Oh, it's better so quality. much better. That's one of the things I love about doing what we do is figuring out ways to do things in a way that ends up making a better product in less time. Well, that's one of the reasons I really like working with you is because you're not stuck on doing it one certain way. You're open to doing things differently. Absolutely. And one of the first reasons why you started doing the mouthpiece differently was because I was having a hard time shaping the mouthpieces. Yep. So you said, okay, well, let's figure out something else that we can do to make it easier. Exactly. We turn out this way. And it's so much better overall exactly. than what we used to be doing. Yep. And it's saving us so much time. Yep. It has been absolutely awesome working on this and yeah. both of us coming together kind of with our different ideas, like me with the white buffalo, you with the yin yang with the woods and just coming together to make this flute. It's turning out so beautiful. I'm so excited for people to see this. Oh, we could not get this done fast enough. I was just like every day, I was like, no, let's just work 12 hours in a row and just get it done because I want to <laughs> see it. I want to see it. I want to get it out. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, yep. Oh, oh there's, there's Stark. Oh, Stark. He's such a good little boy. Right there, when I put that mouthpiece in, I forgot to put the inlay in first. Yep. I was so mad, too. <laughs> that, that mouthpiece was beautiful, and I knew I could get another piece that looks exactly like it or pretty close, but I was so sad. <laughs> I was like, no. Yeah. So I had to cut it off. Oh, it was so sad. Yep, that's just flute making. Look at that burl. Wow. So y'all can see this bark inclusion right there. Here mm -hmm. it comes. When that gets inlaid with the buffalo turquoise, oh OMG, it is incredible.
Look at that. Do you see all the grain? That like loopy grain that's oh, in that yeah. western? I oh, love my it. Gosh. I know originally we decided like I was gonna play the low D and you were gonna play the high D, but I fell in love with the high D. <laughs> <laughs> and right here we're discussing where we wanted the top of the flute to be. And I said I wanted it up there just because I thought that inclusion should be kind of around the back because I felt like if we put the top right where those bark inclusions are, it would have just been a mess with the finger holes. We mm -hmm. wouldn't have gotten the right kind of look. And so I was like, I think we need to do it this way. My dad said, you know what? Just go for it. Exactly. I trust exactly. you, girl. Just go. Okay. Do what you think. I'm with you. I said, all right. Absolutely. It's your celebration, baby. Mm-hmm. You know, one of the most difficult things I've always had in training people is getting them to a point where they trust themselves. My dad often said that uh, everybody wants to do a great job. And some don't know how to do it. And my job is to try and help you figure that out. You did say that a lot. Look at the grain of that western red on the, oh, it's and all fabulous. This yellow cedar, oh my gosh. Oh yeah. The yellow cedar on that high D tube is just awesome. Oh, it's phenomenal. Yeah. So much measuring and calculations and it's a lot of numbers. Yep. You got to have the numbers. If you don't, you're screwed. <laughs> well, the problem is, I mean, you can do it without, but without the numbers, you don't have the same accuracy and the same quality. And that will be it for this video. We are so excited to get the rest of these videos to you so you guys can see the process of us making these flutes and you guys have yourself an absolutely wonderful day. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Whether you're dreaming of your first native flute or wanting to create some custom instrument, Wood Sounds is where your dreams can be made real. My name is Brent Haynes, and you can reach me at 801-822-1415 or brent at woodsounds.com. Have a great day.